Well, hi there. We're going to try something a little bit different today. Um, I want to do something around a conversational Bible study. And one of the things that's always been in my heart is to teach you and to talk to you about hearing God's voice. So we're calling these sessions the School of the Prophets. It's my privilege to have Maggie Gill with me. Um, Maggie's been a friend of mine for a long time and has been working for God all over the world. And part of her, again, walk with Jesus is to hear his voice and to help other people hear his voice. So I just thought it would be good if we can talk about that. Uh, very often when we study the Bible, we uh, get all the verses. But it's great sometimes for somebody to show you how. So you have a verse and then somebody says, but this is how it really, truly works in your heart and experience. And that for me is proper discipleship. So I don't know how many weeks we'll take to do this. It took me a lot of time in teaching it out over four Bible studies. But I think, you know, as long as God keeps enabling us to do this, we'll be chatting away for the next few weeks just so you can be encouraged to hear God for yourself. Really important. One of the big things that I'm adamant about is that I'm not your high priest. Um, I'm not your priest at all. Uh, Jesus Christ is your advocate. He's in heaven and he's praying for you and he's listening for your voice. And we can, as uh, people, listen for his voice. So uh, I guess we'll start off with just one simple premise, uh, Maggie, uh, today is my sheep hear my voice. So, um, Let's have a little bit of a talk around that and uh, talk about people just hearing from God. How are you doing? All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree, Steve. It, it, you can't imagine having a relationship or thinking about having a relationship, can we? Um, without it's a two-way thing. And I, I know there have been times sometimes in my walk where I've got trapped into, you know, talking to God a lot, almost leaving him a message, you know, on the answer phone. And then and forgetting that he wants to talk back to me. Um, but I, I think, you know, Steve, like right for me, right through the Bible, like right at the beginning, I think oh, everything that's important in the Bible somehow starts in Genesis 1 and 2. Yeah. And, and I love that picture of, you know, you've got Father, you've got Son and Holy Spirit having a chat with each other, saying, let's do this, you know, let's make man, let's create this just having a natter with each other. And then as soon as they created Adam and Eve, they're, they're talking. And God's saying, come on, where are you? I want to talk. And so it's that lovely picture of a father with his kids right the way through scripture for me. Um, that's, you know, the basis of, of any relation, a relationship that we have with him. That's what he's longing for, for mm. us, to, us to talk to him and, and for him to talk back to us. I guess that would be true of any relationship, though, to be honest, wouldn't it? You know, if we don't have that ongoing dialogue, uh, we don't have a relationship, you know, and that's yeah. where the relationships break down. And I guess that's where some of us have broken down in our relationship with God is we've been far too busy telling him instead of opening our ears to listen to him as well. Yes, yes. And I think the other thing, I mean, you, you, you mentioned, I love that scripture that you just mentioned there in John, John 10, mm. about where it says, my sheep hear my voice. Um, that, and that's a lovely picture, isn't it? You know, the, of the shepherd um, calling the sheep and the sheep hear him and they, they, they come out and they let him lead them. They trust him. They follow him. And, you know, it's, it's a lovely picture. It's all about life, isn't it? And it's, it's about his concern for the sheep and their relationship is, is one that's sort of full of life. It's to do them good. And I think, I know for me at times, you know, I thought, well, God will just want to talk to me about what he wants me to do for him. <laughs> you know, how he wants me to serve him and things. And, and I've had to learn over the years that that's, that's a really daft way to see God, that, mm -hmm. that he wants to talk to me for me. He wants to tell me how he sees me. Um, you know, there's a verse in the Psalms that says that God's got hundreds and thousands of thoughts about us every day. Um, about us as individuals and he wants to share those thoughts with us you know just like a, a man and his wife or a two friends um and I think often we we think I, I've thought you know God wants to talk to me about what he wants me to do mm. um or is on my case about something but actually it's just this lovely relationship um a lot you say with any human relationship sharing heart and stuff I think where we start to get frightened is when we start to put words around that relationship and we start to use words like prophetic 
uh, or visions or dreams or all of a sudden it becomes become somehow a little bit spooky as if like that's not for me um, mm. but what I what I try to teach the guys when I'm going to talk this out as a bible study series is actually it all starts with this basic premise of just being in relationship and whatever you call it um, I love God to speak to me because I love him to speak to me I also love yeah. him to speak to me so I'm able to speak to other people on his behalf that may not be listening as closely as and intently as I am at any given time. So that's the wonderful thing about hearing God's voice. He, he can speak to us about ourselves, but obviously to the people that we're loving and serving as well. Yes, yes, that's it. That is true. Um, and, that, and, and that's an amazing thing. And as you say, we often think of it that it's going to happen in... Um, perhaps big and, you know, sort of sparkly, magical ways. And I mean, sometimes God does speak in fairly dramatic and spectacular ways, but he also speaks um, so often, doesn't he, just in a, in, in a prod. You know, I love it when I, I just felt a prod quite recently to contact somebody that I haven't contacted for months. And she replied straight away and said, your timing was fantastic. And she said, and you don't know how many times your timing's fantastic. And I thought, well, <laughs> that ain't me. But it's it's those prods, uh, which are often what he uses, aren't they? Just just in our thoughts, um, to to be to be blessing other people um, through us. Absolutely, I think one of the things that we need to understand clearly is that obviously. Christianity has, has come in different flavours along the years and obviously uh, it came along with the Catholic Church came a whole lot of teaching around having a priest that would intercede on our behalf and talk to God about our sins and that's coloured a lot of people's judgment especially if people have come from a bit of a, a religious background or even just the thought about how church works and operates and I know we've started to have people come to faith recently even during the lockdown and one of yeah. the things we want to say to you is you don't need anybody to stand between you and God. Jesus has done the complete work. And there's a wonderful scripture. In, I can't even remember what, what uh, Bible book it's in. But he says, who would put his hand upon me and put his hand upon God? And uh, that's exactly what Jesus did. Put his hand upon me, put his hand upon God. And then now we have this wonderful relationship through Jesus that we didn't have before. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you, you know, that the picture that you just mentioned in John what what's great about that is that the, it's the sheep hear the shepherd's voice don't they mm. all of them it is it, you know this is this is for all of the sheep and any of us that that have come into a relationship with jesus or even even before we do i mean that's the amazing thing isn't it that god was actually yeah. on our case and talking to us and when you hear lots of people's stories the way that god prompted them and invited them and used all sorts of ways to talk to them, even be, before they would say they knew him, um, is an amazing thing. But, but the, you know, the whole thing with the shepherd and the sheep, it's, it's, it's all the sheep can hear his voice and recognise his voice. It's not just for pastors and teachers and people who think they're prophets or whatever. Um, and, and, they, and it's a very sort of simple picture and i think that's that's just so encouraging yeah that's the big point we want to make right from the beginning of this little series because if you have come to faith in jesus just over these last few weeks or you've been struggling in your walk with god the first thing that you need to do is to get into his presence and to have that relationship with him within one to one and to hear his voice so i want you to write that down get you a little bit of piece of paper put it down on your mirror or whatever is my sheep here my voice you know this is your privilege as a son or a daughter of the living god to be able to hear god's voice um which is great so i don't know how it began for you um maggie but as a young man i was always desperate to hear god's voice and a lot of that came out through just private times with me praying to him and learning to hear what his voice had sounded like because i know a lot of people get confused they go well, was that my voice internally? Because we do speak to each other internally. Yes. Was it the devil's voice trying to get me off track? Was it something yes. that I've made up in my own head because I wanted to feel better about myself? Or was yes. it tr truly the voice of God? So how do we go about discerning the voice of God? I think, I mean, some of it, it's, it's like, um, you know, recently I've had people that I don't know very well phoning me up, wanting to talk to me. And, you know, these times where we can't see each other, 
people are phoning you more and sometimes that you do the video thing on whatsapp so you can see which is but sometimes you know i'll have a phone call from somebody and i think oh i don't quite I didn't quite recognize the voice but people that you know quite well even though you can't see them you, you know you know when they're on the phone don't you <laughs> and I think some of it is a bit like that in our relationship with him, isn't it? We, we get used to what sounds like his voice. It's, it's not like a five minute job. I think there is a kind of getting used to. Mm-hmm. But I think that, you know, there are some things to, to check as well. Like um, ha- as we get used to reading his word, um, I think we'll know that his voice, the things that he's saying to us will always line up pretty much with what's in, in the Bible. Yeah. And because his heart is expressed through his word. And so anything that he asks me to do, it's, it is going to line up with, with scripture. Mm. Um, I think we have a peace when it, when it is um, Jesus talking to us, when it's the father talking to us, there, there is, because we've got the Holy Spirit now living in us, mm. there's that peace, there's that, that sort of check isn't there inside, and, and we feel at peace with, with what he's telling us to do. Now, I think you, both of these things have to line up as well. Um, is, it, is, is this true to what you'd be saying in the Bible? Do I have a peace about what he's asking me to do? But I think also, as we start to get to be part of God's family, um, I think there's a, a kind of role in there for sort of for, for checking out what God is saying to us within the body of Christ. Do you know what I mean, Steve? Like, you know, I, I, I would go sometimes and I still do go to sort of people that I think, well, you know, they're pretty mature. Then they're, they're not. Doing. And I talk, so, you know, I think God's been talking to me about this. I want to get it checked out within the family of God, because mm. God's speaking also often collectively to us, isn't he? And through the people that love us. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, and those help those are sort of safe gods. Definitely, mm. definitely are because we don't want to be running off at a tangent. Um so many new Christians get so excited about hearing God's voice. And they'll come and say, Oh Pastor, the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. And yes. I, I I um I try not to pre- prefix everything with the Lord told me. You know, I, I I genuinely believe that I don't know. I go around saying my wife told me this or my wife told me that. No, you no. know, you know, I just obey or listen to you know what, what the instruction. Uh, and I think we can get too excited. You know, we can we can all hear his voice. Um, yes. And so there's a bit of a safeguard, as you say, in in sharing that with somebody that's more mature in the faith. And the Bible also says when we get onto prophecy that those that are spiritual should judge. You know. Come alongside. I know we've um, some of the guys I've been talking to recently and mentoring. Uh, one of the lads in particular came to me right at the beginning of his walk with us six or seven months ago, and said, "God, I, I believe you're calling me to Sweden. God's calling me to Sweden. What do you think, Pastor?" And so I said, "Well, we'll take some small steps of faith, and if yes. God meets us at those points, then we know that it's yeah. His voice that we're not yeah. heard wrong. You know, we're not going to jump in with both feet. We're not going to book no. you a flight out to, to Sweden <laughs> next week, but." What, why, why don't we start praying about what that might look like and write together a business plan as to how you're going to get there and what the steps you need to take are before you can get there. And you know what? God's marvellously meeting him now, and um, it's wonderful to see. But again, yeah. I, you know, we need to just to sometimes be just mindful that, you know, we've got brothers and sisters, moms and dads in the body of Christ that can help us through yeah, this walk. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And I think, you know, when, when, when we really want to hear what he's saying to us, and it's something like that, which is quite, you know, significant for our lives. It's not just the sort of day-to-day stuff. I mean, he talks to us about day-to-day stuff, doesn't he? And, mm-hmm. and, um, but he also, he also is talking to us sometimes about bigger decisions like that. Um, but what I find, Steve, is when I ask him quite specific questions, like, Last week, I thought he was talking to me about something that I've been praying about, something quite specific. And I was saying, Lord, I want your guidance on this. Within about three days, he'd given me the same quite obscure scripture. You know, I'd listen to a podcast. Somebody mentions this scripture. Uh, my daily reading was about that scripture. Do you know what I mean? He, he will he sort of pile on. He'll find different ways because he, he wants, he longs for us to hear from him doesn't he mm-hmm. we want to hear him but he, he's, he's really able to make himself clear um and i think that's an encouragement too 
um, that it's like sometimes it is like pieces of a jigsaw coming together, isn't it? Yeah. We're a bit thick sometimes, aren't we? And God is, we have to remember as well as being our father, he's a great teacher. Yes. And Jesus was a fantastic teacher. And you, you, you've been a teacher. Um, and you know very well that teaching sometimes comes by repetition or by prompting time and time again. And I'm so grateful to the Lord that he's not let me uh, pass by some of the better things in my walk with him because he's prompted me and made sure that I got there. You know, some yes. people say, oh, but if I'm going to miss the will of God, I tell you, gentlemen, oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very difficult if you love Jesus to miss yes. his will because he yes. loves you so much, he'll keep on prompting you until you get into it. So um, there's a lot of yes. stupidity talked about the will of God, but if we've got ears to hear, he will always direct our paths. That's what the scripture says. Yes, yes. And, that, you know, I, I love those scriptures. I think... For me, you know, even in the Old Testament, even before Jesus, you you have got people that were really that knew how to be intimate with God. And mm. like day, I think for me, David is like he really stands out. But you know, he was on his own a lot, wasn't he? When he was young, he had, he had a plenty of chance. Mm. Uh, probably when he was out looking after sheep and stuff, and he liked playing musical instruments. Um, but he he you know he says quite a lot. Really, go after God. You know. That, that if we want to hear from God, just keep pursuing him. And that and, and Jesus himself says, doesn't he, you know, that when we're asking and when we're knocking on the door. So if my heart's really after hearing from him on any level, whether it's a big thing or just my daily, like, I, I am going to hear from him. Mm. And I know for me it helps, like, I, I ask questions, I ask direct questions, and I jot stuff down that I'm talking to him about. And then, you know, and I just look for the different ways that he, he speaks. And, and I'm always amazed. Mm. Yeah, prayer's a two-way street, isn't it? I was always, always taught that, you know, it's a dialogue and not a monologue. And if I'm yeah. doing more talking and I'm doing listening, then perhaps I'm not praying as effectively as I might. Mm. Um, definitely. Uh, that's part of my, been my part of my walk as well, always, you know, to give God, you know, here's, here's the request, but Lord, would you would you show me? One of the things I find incredible about the disciples, um, they could have asked Jesus a multitude of things. They could have asked him, teach us how to do miracles, because he was doing loads of miracles. Mm -hmm. teach, us how to, teach us how to teach like you teach, because look how many people come to listen to you. You have got some fantastic stories, Jesus. Teach us how you put all those stories together. Uh, you know, teach us how to open the eyes of the blind or, or to raise the dead. But actually, they saw something deeper. They, they, they saw something in Jesus was his connection with the Father. And they asked him, teach us how to pray. Because yes. they understood that when he was going up that mountain early in the morning, that he wasn't just taking a list of requests up there for the day. Actually, he was hearing from the Father who was discharging stuff into him so he yes. could go out and do the miracles of the day. So it's very, very important we understand that. The disciples didn't say, show us about the miracles. They sort of asked us, teach us how to pray. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's, it's um, a big part of that is, is catching his heart, isn't it? Catching the Father's heart. Mm. And, you know, I think just like Steve, you know, as friends or as you with, with your wife, you, you'll share heart and feelings about things. What well, you know? How how do you feel about this? How do you see this? And and I think um, some of what we're talking about here is me being able to say to Father, how do you see this? Not just how do you see me, although I think that's that's. Yeah. But Father, what you know? What what grieves you in the world at this time? What what's yeah. what pleases you? You know, how do I please you at this time? What what do you want to uh, what do you want to show me about what you want to do in my life at this time? But I think catching his heart, like friends do and like marriage partners do, uh, that, I think that's quite a big thing. It is which isn't making requests, is it? It's catching where his heart is about something, mm -hmm. about us or about the world or about situations we're in or people we care about and he cares about. Um, and I think he loves to talk to us like that, uh, mm. about those kinds of things. Yeah, there's a whole thing, isn't there, really, about... Um, this was a scripture that I've used prolifically, perhaps over the last five years, in working alongside uh, church and just trying to encourage them to hear God's voices. If you will draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Um, very often we expect God to just jump out of heaven and, and go, here I am. 
but actually mm. he's, he's waiting for uh, uh, us to, to go to him as the father and say, what is it you want to talk to me about? And, and just share heart like that. And lots of scriptures about knocking and asking and seeking. And there has to be a propensity on our part to push in and say, God, I really want to hear you. I'm yeah. not just saying I want to hear you. I really want to hear you. Yes. And I think when we come yeah. with that kind of attitude, then as you say, he, he, he shows us his heart and he reveals the details as well. So we're never under any illusion about what he wants to say. One yes. of my, my pet hates is when people say, I wonder what God is trying to say. God never mm. tried to say anything. He says it really clearly. It's us through a death. So yes. we need to push into that place of wanting to hear, getting near to him. And when yes. we draw near to him, he draws near to us. Yes. And I think, you know, at, at different times, Steve, there, there are things that can help us with that pushing in, aren't there? And the, you know, the hearing clearly. Um, I know for some of us who've got very, I don't find it very difficult to be on my own because I live on my own at the moment. So, you know, I can go and sit and be with him anytime, really, if I, if I really want to. Um, but yesterday I had a, a lady in my small group contacting me. She said, oh, it's so hard to be on my own at the moment. You know, all the family's under lockdown and it's quite a noisy household. And she's, you know, longing some days just to, just, just to find some space. But, but bless her, she's pushed in. And, you know, I, I said to a friend recently, I said, I'm finding it quite hard to hear what God's saying to me at this time about me. And she, she said to me something which uh, I would say to anybody else and encourage them if you're trying to really tune in with God. She said, why don't you pray? Just pray in the spirit a bit. And uh, so I did. I just said, Lord, you know, I want to hear about this sat and prayed in tongues that clears all the other channels away doesn't it that gives yeah. us direct access to him mm -hmm. and so i find not just if i'm trying to get words for other people but if i'm trying to really clear the channel if i've got a bit fogged up you know <laughs> um which we can that that praying in the spirit and uh, all worshiping first just just having some time to worship this morning i put some worship songs on and I just worshipped alongside with, you know, Hill songs or whoever it was. And again, I think that, that for me, that just helps to, to clear the fog away mm. uh, when I've got th lots of things going on. And those sorts of practical things, that mm. practical and spiritual, aren't they? They can just Definitely. help us to tune in with him. Um, and and I, I find out that I'm, good, I, I'm better at sometimes writing things down as well. To, as he says things to me, I, I jot mm. them down so that I can go back and say, okay, he said that to me and I'm not being robbed of that. That's an end to build up that picture with him of the way he's talking to me. So I think there's practical stuff like that, that help us to position ourselves for hearing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. God's very intimate, isn't he? In terms of the way he deals with us, you know, the scriptures talk about a still small voice, but you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. There are times where we have to get all the other noise out of the, out of our head and out of the background. Mm -hmm just so that we can hear him whisper to us. Um, mm. You know, God, God doesn't often trumpet, does he? You know, but very, very mo most of the time, he just whispers into our ear stuff that we need to hear. And I always find that, just moving on a little bit, um, we'll cover this in weeks to come, but when I'm praying for other people in an altar situation and uh, ministering to them, I'm, yes. I'm always I've got my ear open to the Holy Spirit that he would speak mm. something that then mm. I can br bring a word. So it's having that open here, um, yes. and being, being that kind of place where you're ready to receive. I think perhaps some of you may have been struggling here in the voice of God because you've rushed into his presence. You've had a day at work. Everything's gone wrong. Uh, the mm. telly's on in the other room. You can hear the kids mm. around the corner. And all this, you, you're mm. trying to hear from God and you've got no chance. You know, I found mm. as well, I, I find some of my best time in praying is actually walking. Uh, when mm. I'm walking in the morning, yes. especially when it's quite still. And there's nobody about and there's just me and god walking together and that's just a, a blessed time but the bible does talk about making a room doesn't it making a specific yes. room and shutting the door wherever it might be and yes. uh, and finding a place yeah 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 i think that's important and i but and but i think like you say it doesn't necessarily uh for, for some of us practically the room isn't necessarily you know the room at home it may mm -hmm. be um, wandering about with our headphones in and, and being in the countryside with him and um, but just being away from people. Or the car as well, especially if you've got your radio switched off and your heart open, 
I often find that God speaks to me when I'm driving along uh, prolifically. Uh, and then I have to stop and write down what he said uh, when I get to the, the other end. I keep saying, oh, I must remember that, must remember that. Um, so, yeah, it is making room for God. And I think that's really important. So I think we've covered some significant ground um, just having a little chat so far. I, I, I don't want to overload everybody with what we've been talking about. But really clearly what we've been saying is my sheep and my voice that God wants to communicate to us that it's not just a, a, a one-way relationship, one-way traffic. Uh, and that all of us have that ability to hear his voice, but we just need to get ourselves sometimes positioned, uh, as you say, speak in tongues and get yourself into that place, have some time with worship, get a bit of solitude, maybe read the scriptures first, and then just sit there and say, God, let's chat and, and see what happens. And... Um, I just want to encourage everybody at church to take some time out this week to, to hear his voice and let us know what God's saying to you because he's speaking to all of us during this lockdown, but he's speaking to us as individuals and as a church. So before I go, I'd like you to pray with us, Maggie. I think there's a couple of things I'd like us to pray for. Firstly, you mentioned people speaking in tongues. I know there's people in our church still that need that um, gift from God and the Bible's mm -hmm. quite clear that we can all speak in tongues. Um, that the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon us to give us boldness, but also he gives us that tongue, that prayer language, so that we can, we can pray when we don't know what to pray. And I think that's really important. So if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit in terms of speaking in tongues, Maggie's going to pray for you now that you might receive that. And the second is that people would have the blockages of hearing from God removed. Uh, and, and maybe I'm just going to leave you with this one before Maggie prays. Is maybe you've done something that you need to repent of because sin sometimes will hold back the voice of God. Um, it'll get in the way of your hearing very clearly from the father. You know, it's like when you've had a row, row with your wife, it's no good trying to go in and then talk about something serious 10 minutes later. You need to put the issue right first before you can have the conversation. And so I just believe that Holy Spirit is prompting again me to say that to some of you. You need to repent and, and maybe just get a new, be in a new place with God. So would you pray for us, Maggie, as we go? And uh, yes. thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. So. Yeah, so Father, thank you so much that you love us unconditionally and that you long for this relationship that we've been talking about. Father, thank you that you long to talk to us. And I just, I just pray for everybody listening to this. Uh, Father, that we would know so clearly in our hearts and in our spirits that this is for us as well, that nothing, nothing at all can keep us away from having this kind of relationship with you. So, Father, we just ask that for those who haven't received this lovely, lovely gift that you've given of tongues, which, which is, helps us to tune in with you and open our ears to your spirit, we say, Holy Spirit, would you be poured out on these dear ones? Just pour yourself out on these dear ones, we pray, in Jesus' name. And we say, would you release this gift to these dear ones who are longing for this today, Father? Thank you that it's your heart and your desire to give good gifts to your children. And Father, for those who, who are feeling any kind of conviction from you at the moment, and, and we say, just please know in your hearts that this, there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Condemnation doesn't come from the Father. Mm. But Father, thank you that where you convict us and you bring us to repentance, that's your kindness, because you want to keep our relationship with you open. So we say to any who are feeling that at the moment, thank we receive the forgiveness that the Father promises the moment that we confess. He is faithful and just and forgives us and cleans us from all the gunk. So receive that forgiveness and that cleanness from him. And Father, we say to all of these dear ones listening that they'd hear your voice so clearly this week in fresh ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We do pray in Jesus' name and uh, be blessed. Uh, thank you, Maggie, for your time. I think the next session we're going to go on and look at uh, something that Paul says. He says he wants us all to, to prophesy, yes. uh, which, again, is a challenge. It's, it's a, again, it's a, something that we need re to respond to. If the apostle is teaching that, then how do we respond? Because, you know, we could leave it to one side and say, that's not for me. But that's clearly not the teaching of the Bible. I don't know about you. I just want everything that God's got for me. So Absolutely. We'll be taking some time out to unpack all of this stuff. So you got any questions for me or Maggie, please feel free to drop me on uh, Facebook Messenger or email or text or WhatsApp, whatever you're using. Uh, we'll, we're happy to take some questions, actually. That'd be really useful if you've got anything that you've 
heard today that you'd like to comment on or ask about further, just let us know. And then we can roll that into one of our next sessions. Uh, we want the feedback. We're not having a conversational Bible study just so we can have some fun ourselves, although I've really enjoyed that this afternoon. Uh, we're doing it so that you'll be blessed and built up in it, your most holy faith, and that's our, our prayer and desire. One of the things that we desire to do is put so much content on the internet that even when we go back to church, that the, this stuff will be resource for you to come. So there could be some people listening to us in five years' time going, so that's how you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? So yeah, God, God bless you, Maggie, for your time. And... Uh, and you and all the church, all the church there in Leicester, we send our love and regard. So uh, we all be strong, and I'll uh, I'll see you next week. God bless yes. you. Bye. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Bye.